This segment brought to you by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. Welcome back to Ag AIM in Kansas. I'm Britton Recker. As we are in full swing of summer, most of us have our grills out in full force. As we're grilling the summer, most people go strictly off the color of meat they're grilling to indicate if the food is ready to be consumed. But color is not always the right indicator of meat doneness. With me now is food safety specialist, Karen Blakesley. Welcome, Karen. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So why isn't the color always a good indicator of food doneness? Well, when we think of grilling meat, um, food, the, the color does change when you cook it, but it can be a little deceiving, um, especially when you're cooking ground meat like hamburgers. Um, the color on the inside might still, might look brown, which some people determine, oh, that looks done. Well, actually, the actual temperature of that uh, hamburger may not be high enough to kill any potential bacteria that might be in there. On the, on the flip side, it could still show it that it's pink, but actually the temperature is up to the appropriate temperature that it needs to be. So that's why we don't recommend, especially for ground meat, to judge the doneness by using color. Now, if you're cooking something like a steak or um, something like that, you know, the inside of that meat has never been touched by anything else. So that's why you can still have that range of temperature when you're cooking like a steak or something like that. The temperature for doneness can actually be a little bit lower. Um, But for ground meat, since it's gone through that mechanical action of breaking up that meat muscle, um, there's a lot more exposure to the meat surface and there's always that little chance that bacteria could have um, gotten on that little little piece of meat. And so that's why, especially for ground meats, we really need to use a thermometer to check for doneness and for other things, but especially for ground meat. So what is the correct way to use a food thermometer? Well, it depends on the type of thermometer that you have. So one of the the standards, and I'll kind of hold up my thermometer here. This is a dial gauge thermometer. And this one is probably one of the the least expensive thermometers that you can find. It's got a dial face on it, looks like that. And what you usually see on these is a little dimple right here um, on the stem. And so when you insert this into any kind of food, you want to make sure the stem gets completely covered at least up to where that dimple is or even higher. So this one's a little trickier because the the temperature sensor is farther up in the stem of the thermometer. Now, if you have a digital thermometer, which might look like something like this, um, turn it on so that you can see the numbers on there. The actual, these are a little more temperature sensitive. The temperature sensitive point is actually in the tip. So, um, so how you use your thermometer, again, depends on which type that you have. So, again, for the dial face, you have to insert it at least up until where that dimple is. So if you're checking a hamburger, you'll want to insert it onto the side like this, not from the top. But if you have a digital thermometer, you can insert it from the top and get a an accurate reading. It's a little easier to handle, especially when you're cooking hamburgers or something like that. Those thinner, thinner cuts, this is probably a little better way to go. There's lots of different kinds of thermometers out there. Uh, lots of, there's some that have, that are electronic, have bells and whistles, you know, they can connect to your smartphones. So, um, you just need to shop for what works best for you and for your budget. But regardless, especially with those ground meats, they're worth it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. They, they are your best defense uh, for food safety. And again, we don't want you to judge the meat doneness, especially on ground meats by color. Um, 
as I mentioned earlier, steaks could be, you know, a little pink in the middle. Some people like rare steaks I, and, or even well done steaks. So you can, you can uh, use a little varying temperature on those. So, um, but yeah, you're, you're, this is your best friend when it comes to food safety is your thermometer. When we come back, we'll have more with Karen here on Ag Etc. I'm Bob Swartz and I've devoted the last 43 years to helping Kansans reach their retirement goals and to protect the family farm. At Bob Swartz Financial, we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always dreamed of. Our team of professionals can help you create an efficient strategy using a variety of investment vehicles to help you address your financial needs and your concerns. Bob Swartz Financial values, commitment, and transparency. Highways 40, 83, and I-70 come together right here in Oakley. Roads that lead to businesses, to magnificent rock formations, to scenic vistas, to places where legends were made. Roads that lead us home. Discover Oakley, the gateway to western Kansas. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Let us help feed your family. Welcome back to Ag Etc. We're continuing with grilling tips with Karen Blakesley. So there are three most common types of grilled meats. Would you go into that and the correct temperatures? Sure. So um, there's three temperatures to remember. It's really pretty simple. Uh, the first temperature is 145 degrees. That's the minimum cooking temperature for uh, whole muscle meats like steaks and chops, um, roasts, things like that. Uh, 145 is what you're looking for, degrees Fahrenheit. Um, for ground meat, like ground beef, ground pork, ground lamb, uh, those are your red meats. The internal temperature you're looking for is 160. And then for all poultry products, whether they're chicken breasts or chicken thighs or a whole chicken, whatever it is, 165 is what you're looking for for poultry, any kind of poultry. Now, Karen, to wrap up, do you have any more food safety tips for grilling outdoors? Absolutely. Well, um, the, the main thing is, you know, if you're taking meat out to the grill, you got, one, got it on a plate, that raw meat, don't reuse that plate uh, for the finished meat. Either get a, a different plate or wash it before you use it for your finished foods. So keep, keep your plates and utensils separate. Um, to prevent cross-contamination. Always wash your hands. That's just a given for anything, especially these days. Um, if we all don't know how to wash our hands by now, <laughs> I'm not sure what else we can say, but it is so important, so important uh, for overall health. Um, other things, things keep your hot foods hot uh, when you're ready to eat them try to keep them above 140 degrees uh, if you're eating outside if you're out for more than an hour you want to get those foods in a cold uh, container either an ice chest or a refrigerator within one hour um, with these hot temperatures that we're having these days um, so keep your hot foods hot same thing with cold foods keep them below 40 uh, keep your cold foods cold and again uh, don't leave them out for more than an hour in these hot temperatures outside um, you know be mindful of where you're grilling at you know you don't want to catch anything on fire um, if you can set your grill up away from your house so that it doesn't uh, uh, flames don't uh, touch your house or anything like that you don't want to get your house on fire so you know be mindful of that kids and, and pets outside or uh, watch be out there with the grill so that the kids and pets don't run in, into it and knock it over and things like that so but oh, most of most importantly just have fun and try to get outside and get some fresh air absolutely well Karen thank you so much for being on the program absolutely thanks for having me I'm Britton Recker, and this has been Ag AM in Kansas. 
Thanks for watching Ag Etc. As always, I'm Britton Rucker, and I'll see you next week here on Ag AM in Kansas.